morning, Aldersgate family. It's good to see you all this morning. For those in person, for those online, hello. Um, and I forgot to announce this at 9.30, so for those watching online, we've been experiencing some technical difficulties the last few weeks with the live stream of the 11 a.m. service. So if it cuts out mid-service, have no fear. We're recording it, and Tony will get it posted up later this afternoon. But fingers crossed and prayers said that doesn't happen, and that the technical gremlins were a July thing, and that now that we're in August, we'll be fine. Uh, so my name is Molly Johnson. I am on staff here at Aldersgate. Pastor Pamela and her family are on a much-deserved vacation in Greece. And so our prayers are with them for wonderful times, safe travels, and beautiful Mediterranean weather. Uh, so we got a few announcements for you today that I'm going to breeze through pretty quickly because we've got a very packed service today. Uh, first off, if it's your first time visiting us, welcome. Uh, we have a welcome uh, back for you here for John uh, coming through. So raise your hand if it's your first time with us today. Uh, we'd love to give you uh, a little gift as a token of our appreciation for you coming to be with us this morning. Uh, so we want to invite you to tear out uh, the attendance slip here in your bulletin. Uh, let us know you're here. Any prayer requests that you have, uh, check off any activities or ministries here at Aldersgate that you'd like to be a part of, and our teams will be able to get in touch with you on that. So next Sunday, we have a fun event for our kiddos, a slip and slide into the new school year, because uh, for kids here, who's excited for school to start again? For the parents here, who's excited for school to start again? Yeah, I feel like more parents than kids. Yeah, yeah. So next Sunday afternoon, uh, we'll have a slip and slide out on the church lawn. Uh, we've had some lovely hot days here of late, so I imagine it's going to be a great opportunity for the kids to come and cool off, uh, wear your swimsuits, bring some sunscreen, and come and have fun uh, before we roll into the new school year. On Tuesday, August 14th, we have a blood drive that's going to be in Wesley Hall. Uh, there's information on our website, uh, including the link that you can click on or the phone number you can call to schedule an appointment. Uh, Walk-ins are welcome as well, but if you do the appointment ahead of time, it lets you fill out the paperwork and things that they require. So it's a wonderful opportunity to, to give back and be, be a part of our community. In two weeks, two weeks from today, is kickoff Sunday. It's earlier this year. It's usually not after, not until September after Labor Day, but because FCPS just keeps bumping it earlier in August, so are we. We're bumping it earlier in August. Uh, so Sunday school for our kids and youth will kick off. Uh, youth and the children will meet at 9.30. Youth in the youth room in uh, room 102. Children in various places around the second floor. We do have registration open for the children's Sunday school. Uh, it's not required, but it does. it's requested. It does help. Uh, Lisa get a good head count of kids and make sure we have enough materials for planning purposes. Uh, for confirmation this year is going to be at 11 a.m. It's going to be taught by Andreas uh, during the fall months with the confirmation of the kids in January. Uh, so registration information on that and the link for registration is up on our website. All of that's also in our newsletter that comes out on Thursday afternoons. And then also on kickoff Sunday, we will have our blessing of the backpacks. Uh, so if your kiddos go to Sunday school at 930, start here. We're going to bless the backpacks at 930 in the sanctuary first here. Kids will gather in the narthex and come on down and then head to Sunday school. Uh, if you don't do Sunday school, you just come to worship at 11 o'clock. Bring your backpacks. We're going to pray for them and bless the backpacks and the teachers and the students at the 11 o'clock service as well. And lastly, as we're talking about school supplies and back to school, uh, while we are wonderfully blessed in our community, we also know that there are those who need a little bit of help. And so our mission for the month of August is to collect school supplies for elementary school students, middle school students in our community uh, whose families might need a little extra help in getting them outfitted for the school year. Uh, there's information, a uh, shopping list of supplies that are needed that's on our website. Uh, you can also find information and in, I believe a printout of the shopping list uh, at the bins by door number three. So take a look at that. Uh, uh, look in our newsletter on the website for the information on that, and it's a wonderful way to give back to our community. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Randy to talk about leadership and VBS. Thank you, Molly. Appreciate you helping to assist with worship today. Good morning, church family. We're really glad you're here today, and I do want to acknowledge the number of new families that are here today. We want to welcome you and glad that you're here exploring uh, what it might be like to be here at Altersgate UMC with your families. Uh, we have had a really fruitful and busy July, and uh, part of that started off uh, the first of the month with our leadership summit, and out of our leadership summit with over 30 of our leaders meeting with our 
church coach, Ideal Curtis, uh, we came up with five takeaways that we wanted to share with you that we feel are important in the life of the church. Uh, John McRae and the strategic ministry team are working hard on this, so I'll share these with you uh, briefly, and then we'll talk about next steps, okay? So take a look at this. Uh, one of the takeaways we felt is important and what our theme was for the day was perseverance. Perseverance is a key attribute of Alters Gate and the United Methodist Church, and our faith is built on eternal principles of service, hope, and grace. Although leaders will change in and out, national level church policy will evolve, and the environment we face will change. The church remains a force for good. Can we say amen to that? You know, a force for good. Now watch how this develops. So uh, the second takeaway is looking inward and outward at the collective skills and experience of the congregation and our community can help the church meet its needs in an efficient fashion. Our collection of time and talents is an important part of this effort, but Altersgate will explore new ways of enabling humble acts of service because that's what Christ calls us to. Third, Remaining transparent is an enduring principle in finances, changes, ministry, work, and more. We are one church, and proactively building bridges is important between ministries, between church leaders, and the congregation. There are no silo ministries. We all work together and amongst one another. We will continue to utilize all the tools at our disposal to distribute information and create shared awareness within the congregation. Fourth. The fourth takeaway is Altersgate is a community bedrock, right? Think about it. The church is a faith community, but also much more to people in this area in which we live in the Fort Hunt community. What's it include? Think about all the scouts that have met here and are meeting here. Think about our Alters Day, Day School. Think about volunteer opportunities that are offered and the community theater. Did you know we had three different camps that were held here at the church during the month of July? and much more. And then finally, this last takeaway is streamlining sign-up methodology and enhancing communication of opportunities to serve will continue to connect the congregation with its ministry groups. We are all one in making use of all of our talents will amplify the good work of Altersgate many times over. So John, strategic team, thank you for those takeaways that you're offering us out of our leadership summit. Very transparent, keeping us informed. What are next steps? Now the strategic team is working on getting a questionnaire together to go out to the congregation, to you. And what we'll do is invite you to give some responses to four or five questions, which will then help us discern God's will to look forward to 2025 to 2030 and what our focus will be as a congregation together. So when you get that, fill it in, then the strategic team will take that and we'll end up having a report to the whole congregation sometime probably in the October, November area as we do our work together. So thank you for giving us a chance to share that. Now, I mentioned to you that July has been a very busy month here at Altersgate. What's happened? Well, we started the month off by onboarding a new pastor, Pastor Pamela, who happens to be in Greece this week with her family. And then, of course, we went to the leadership summit that we just shared about. Our youth went on mission, and they did mission projects all around this community for an entire week with worship each evening. It was a great experience for them. And then our Honduras mission team went, and we built four houses. We're going to share that with you in just a little bit. And then to end the month of July, we had a whole week of vacation Bible school, SCUBA it was called, and we want to take a moment to let you watch this video and to celebrate with us all the boys and girls and all those that helped make for a wonderful Bible school week. Watch this.
for School of Vacation Bible School. Thank you for your prayers, your love and support for all our boys and girls. If you happen to participate in any form or fashion for Bible school this week, just put up your hand. I know we had a lot of people here at 930, but those of you that did, thank you all, Britt and uh, Quinn, thank you all so much. We really appreciate it. Oh, what a blessing. Almost 100 kids, 35 volunteers. It's a great week. If you'll stand as you're able, please, and join in our call to worship today. The words will be on the screen. The goodness of God beckons, calling us to goodness and grace. The grace of God redeems, saving us and making us whole. The love of God welcomes, inviting us to worship and praise. Please join in the singing of the opening hymn, number 365 in the United Methodist hymnal, Grace Greater Than Our Sin.
join in our opening prayer, and the words will be on your screens. God, lift up our hearts this day, for we long to see your salvation. Lift us up from the pits of sin and sorrow, that we may walk in the light of your love and grace. Create us anew as reflections of your light and as offerings of your grace. For we yearn to bless everyone we meet, even ourselves, in your name. In hope and gratitude we pray. Amen. teaching and playing the horn and Doug thanks for accompanying me today let's give these guys another hand we're really glad you can share your gifts today
Well, friends, uh, we'd like to take a moment and express our deep appreciation uh, for the opportunity that this church gave us to be able to go and uh, share in a week of mission in Honduras. Uh, we had a 15-member team. We were able to construct four houses while we were there. We worked with the boys and girls in another community and also at an orphanage. And uh, we were able to do a lot of great work through your prayers and your financial support and all the ways that you've helped support the team. We'd like to take a moment. We would like for you to watch a little um, uh, picture show of what we have here, of all the work we did, and then we have a few testimonies to share with you as well for our week. So let's watch this.
I love this mission trip where people from different um, churches came together and we just worked so well together. One of my favorite memories was of abuela, which means grandmother in Spanish. And so we went, did her house, they painted it green, but it was her smile. It was her smile that really got me. She didn't have uh, many teeth, but she had such a beautiful smile and a love for God, and I will never forget that. It comes down to two things, I think. Uh, the first is the overwhelming gratitude of the people that we built the homes for. Um, they were living in um, shacks, like things they had cobbled together from scraps. And we gave them four walls and a, a, a roof and a floor um, and a door. Um, and it seems so simple, but it means everything to them. And when we painted it, 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 it went from being just a, a house to being a home for them. Something that meant a lot to me on this mission trip in Honduras was getting to work alongside the homeowners. Uh, at one of the houses, Luis kept pitching in, uh, hammering the nails, helping us lift the boards, grabbed a paintbrush. Uh, he wanted to be involved in all aspects of the home building process. So then it was even more meaningful when we got to give him this on this mission trip um, to give back, to give to a community in need for essentials, for homes, to work with children, which is on my heart always. I can't say that I have been able to give as much as this country has given to me. So being in Honduras has been eye-opening and life-changing, uh, but for me the most impactful thing was to see pile of wood and four posts on the ground and turning that into a home and what the home <laughs> means to the people here it, it's a foundation it's it's a way for them to really become a bigger part of the community so it's more than just a home for them it's it's really a transformation now when i think of honduras um, i will think of joy because everywhere we went um, no matter the circumstances, you could see joy. And no matter what language we speak, we can always communicate through our um, smiles and our hugs. This, this moment in time here with my friend Ramon has been a great blessing to me from the first time that I saw him and saw him and saw the, the, the desire in his, in his face to have his own place and to, and to be an example to this community. I just, I really wanted to, to really work hard for him. My favorite moment of this Honduras trip has been going back to Berlin and just seeing the smiles on the kids' faces as we returned. They were so happy to see us and they were greeting us with hugs and just smiles. So. My favorite moment from this trip was going to church Sunday morning. It was just really cool seeing everybody just jump around with joy and so graceful with everything. And, you know, being in the U.S., I realized, you know, to be grateful for everything we have because here everybody's so grateful even though they have much less than we do. So Walter Gate family and friends, our uh, volunteer and mission trip to Honduras, really appreciate your love and support and care, and glad we could share a few moments with you from the work that we did. Thank you very much. That their father was dead. Joseph's brother said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph saying, your father gave us this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when he, they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good 
in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thank you, John. Would you pray with me? Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts now be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. Come Holy Spirit and Lord, as we have so many things to celebrate today, we still go through life and some of the challenges that we are faced with. So may uh, our Bible story today and the message we hear and receive from you uh, be something that will be helpful for us and grow in all of our relationships. Going through some of the tough challenges of life, oh God, we know that you're always with us. So thank you for being our rock, our fortress, our friend, and our redeemer. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Friends, uh, before I start the message, I just want to, uh, again, say thank you uh, for another thing, for all of your prayers uh, for my mother, uh, who we know is in her last days. Today is her 80th birthday. Our prayer was that she make it to 80. We've celebrated her birthday this weekend. But again, thank you for your many prayers and support. We really appreciate it. Happy birthday, Mom. We love you. So family conflict is never an easy thing to deal with. Maybe you are fortunate enough not to have any family conflict in your life. But I also know many of us do. Or maybe it's been such a long occurring conflict or disagreement, you've either learned to cope with it, tried to forget it, the proverbial sweep it under the carpet, maybe just want to avoid it, or maybe are afraid to really bring it back up and honestly deal with it. Now, when we speak of redemption, which we've been doing over the month of July, and how God can take what is bad, often intended to bring harm, we also look to see how God can turn even the most challenging situations in life into something good. Yes, Jesus redeeming us from our sin, but also redeeming the effects of sin on us. In fact, most of our biblical stories and our biblical families are filled with family conflict. And today's story of Joseph and his brothers is indeed no exception. It takes up 13 chapters in Genesis amongst 12 brothers born to four mothers. It's clear Joseph, yes, the Joseph Donny Osmond played in Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat. Do we have any Donny Osmond fans here today? I know we did the early service because my wife was here. And if I didn't mention that, I'd probably be in trouble. Now, I couldn't show you a picture of Donnie because that was Donnie and his muscular self. Uh, and you can look that up on Google later. But Joseph was Jacob's favorite son. And when he gave his favorite son the beautiful multicolored coat, the despise the older brothers already had for him only deepened. Joseph does have this gift of being able to dream and interpret those dreams. Only in his dreams he shares, it centers around all of his brothers coming to bow down to him. Now me, I think even if I had those dreams, I'm not sure I would share those dreams, especially with my brothers, but not Joseph. And because he does, his brothers begin to ridicule him, poke fun at him, and the conflict only deepens. Can't you hear it? Little brother thinks he's better than the rest of us. Sent out by his father to the fields one day to check on where his brothers are tending the herds, they say, here comes that dreamer. And they begin to plot how to kill their own brother. Today in family conflict, it's easy to literally just relocate and move away from it. Or it's easy maybe just to write people off. In this case, they just wanted to get rid of or eliminate their problem brother. Now, there was an older brother by the name of Reuben. And he knows and realizes what harm this is going to do to their father. 
So long story short, he and then the brothers devise a different plan to sell Joseph to a caravan that's going to Egypt. He'll be sold into slavery, and what they'll do is they'll kill a goat, they'll spread the blood on the dreamer's coat, and they will go tell their father he was killed by a wild animal while he was on his way to check up on his brothers. And that's exactly what they do. The coat and the message get back to Jacob, and his grief is unbearable. A huge rift is created in the family that will take years to heal if it ever really does. Ironically, once in Egypt, Joseph is shown favor by Pharaoh's official Potiphar. And because he has these great administrative skills, he rises to prominence in Pharaoh's court. Until one day, Potiphar's wife tries to lure Joseph into her bedroom. Joseph refuses. She gets mad at him, angry at him, screams, and then the setup is on. Joseph is then thrown in jail, and he stays there quite a while. Now, in the meantime, Pharaoh is having these frightening dreams of cows eating cows and corn stalks eating corn stalks. While in prison, the scripture tells us God had favor on Joseph. Someone happens to recall Joseph could interpret dreams. So Joseph goes to Pharaoh, and guess what? When Pharaoh tells Joseph the dreams, he can, with God's help, the scripture says, interpret them after all of Pharaoh's magicians and all of his soothsayers could not. Now, the dreams speak of a great famine that's coming. Pharaoh believes Joseph and in turn places Joseph in charge of the whole land of Egypt to come up with a plan to save what was needed to survive a devastating drought. And the drought came. Now people then came from all over the region to Egypt, and they came to Joseph to find food to survive, including ten brothers from a land called Judah just north of Egypt, and the youngest brother, Benjamin, stayed behind. Now, Joseph recognizes his brothers. They don't recognize him. They came seeking sustenance from the granaries Joseph had built for those seven years leading up to the drought. Now Joseph has decisions to make. Can you imagine? Help them or not. Harm them or not. Make them pay. Make them suffer. Put them to death. Reveal who he is or not. And you have to understand, Joseph had the power and the ability to do any of these things. He at first chose to speak harshly to them, to a point where they actually feared for their lives. Have you ever heard the phrase, he put the fear of God in them? That's exactly what Joseph did. Now, there's some back and forth in all this, even asking about other family members. And yes, there happens to be a younger brother. Bring him with you when you come next time. What if something, though, happens now to Benjamin? If we, the older brothers, take him, it's going to kill our father. There's more game play as Joseph has a silver cup of his own stashed in a food sack that's being taken back to Jacob and the families. And again, his brothers not knowing who he was, Joseph sent men to catch them, and they are now accused of stealing. They're in the hot seat. Now, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but Joseph surely put them through the ringer and in some sense made them feel the threats and the uncertainty upon their lives and their families. As the story hits a high point, it comes to a place where Joseph could no longer control his emotions. He made everybody leave his presence except for his brothers, them and him. He says, do not be distressed, and he reveals who he is. I am your brother, Joseph. Is my father still living? His brothers were terrified. And here is Joseph's response from Genesis 45.5. He says to them, do not be distressed and do not be angry for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. 
So whether you or I would handle meeting up with family again like this when there's been a rift after he went through all he went through or not, here is where Joseph ends up. He says, God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. And once Pharaoh heard of this, Joseph was told to bring his father, his brothers, and all their families to Egypt and to enjoy the fat of the land. Yes, we all probably know that years later, like over 400 years later, another Pharaoh's leadership would lead to the enslavement of the Hebrews. And then, of course, we would have the great story of Moses and the Exodus. But for now, they were spared and they thrived on the plains of the Nile. What a story of redemption and what a model for us to consider when things go astray in our own families or in our friendships. When Jacob passes away, Joseph's brothers, again, they fear for their lives because Joseph had a deep, mature, spiritual relationship with God, he could see in the midst of this the broader picture and how God was working. They came to Joseph and they bowed down just as his boyhood dream had suggested. Joseph's response, I think, is one of the most powerful redemption responses I've ever heard. Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So don't be afraid. Joseph then reassures them. And what did he do? It's really important. He spoke kindly to them. Wow. It's a great way to learn to deal with conflict we might go through. Maybe Joseph only comes to this place after years of prayer, reflection, and trusting God for a bigger plan. Friends, on this Communion Sunday, the one New Testament Bible verse that I think relates best to the story is when Jesus is there hanging on the cross. He utters some of these last words. Can you recall them? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Friends, no matter what we've said, done, or thought, no matter what we've been through or was or maybe what we're going through right now or what's been done to us, the larger picture of our sacred journey is that we are forgiven people called to forgive others just as Christ has forgiven us. Now, I do know it's not always so easy. But do we think it was easy for Joseph? Do we think it was easy for Jesus? How can we find God during what is often intended for harm, that God somehow intends to bring good out of it? Let's ponder that as we come to the table today. And in the week ahead, would you be open to God's grander picture in your own life, and our lives, our families, our friendships at work, maybe even within the life of the church. Let's consider those things and see what good God can do. Would you pray with me? God, we know that you did amazing things in Joseph's life. It's kind of hard to understand how his spiritual journey led him through this mire to the place where he was finally able to reassure and even kindly speak to those who had the evilest intentions toward him, his own family. Oh God, how he demonstrates for us your mercy, your forgiveness and grace, that which we all need in our own lives and that which we are invited to offer to others. This prayer we offer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Would our ushers please come forward now for the receiving of our tithes and offerings. And as they come, just a reminder of our giving slot and the different ways that you might give to support all the wonderful things that God is doing in the life of our church.
loving, redeeming Lord. We thank you so much for this day, for the blessings that you've given us today, and for the many blessings that we have each and every day. We come to you, Lord, with these offerings of our financial resources, as well as our time and our talents, our gifts, our service, and our witness. We pray, Lord, that you will bless these and have them go out into our community as they have for in our church here for Vacation Bible School, in our community for the donation of school supplies to support the kids in our area and around our world for mission trips to Honduras. Lord, we thank you and we offer these up to you. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Friends, as we prepare to come to the table, in the United Methodist Church, we share in communion by intention. So we will uh, offer you a piece of bread, and then you may take that piece of bread, and you may dip it in the chalice into the grape juice that we have, and then you can partake. We also to remind folks that as you come today, if you wish to pause and light a candle in the front or back, a prayer for a loved one or a friend or a situation that you are going through yourself, feel free to do that. Also, please be mindful that if you need gluten-free elements, we do have wafers and juice that are gluten-free. You can ask us as we serve. We'll be glad to provide those. Or if you have a loved one or a friend at home or you're going to go visit somebody this week and you'd like to take them communion, you can pick that up as well. Now, as we prepare to come to the table, let's share in this invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sins, and all who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins to God and to one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, friends, in line with the message that we've received today, we invite you to take a few moments of silent confession. Now, friends, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. On that night, when Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room, sitting around that table for the Last Supper, he took bread, he blessed it, and then he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, for this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. He called it the cup of the new covenant, and he told his disciples, this is for you, for the forgiveness of sins, my blood poured out for all the world. We know that Jesus shared those moments with all those disciples, some who would betray, some who would deny, all who would abandon in those moments. But Jesus, those words, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive us, for we know not what we do. God, we ask for your blessing now upon these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we might be the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood for all the world. Until Christ comes again in final glory, and together we feast at that heavenly banquet. Make us one with Christ, one with each other. Now, God, we ask that as we prepare to come to your table, that we can share together in that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now if those who are going to be serving communion or helping to assist in any way would please come forward. We invite you to do so now.
Please lift our voices together in prayer. Would you pray with me? Loving God, we thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet in your eternal realm. Send us out with the power of your spirit to live and to work and to praise for your glory. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord, Please stand and join us for the singing of our closing hymn, number 140 in our United Methodist hymnal, Great is Thy Faithfulness. things that we might consider in our relationships with our families and our neighbors and just to go as a forgiven people ready to share God's grace, love, and forgiveness with others. I want to say to new families that are here today, we have a fellowship time between the 9.30 and 11 o'clock service with uh, drinks and fellowship and goodies. So if you decide to come back and be with us again, and we hope you will, just know that that time is available and uh, it's just an opportunity to get to know more folks as you come into the life of the church. For now, let's go on our way and share in this responsive benediction. As you have been forgiven, now go into a world that needs your forgiving, healing touch. 
We go to bring peace and hope to others, sharing God's love with everyone, everywhere. Amen.